By providing space for constant evolution, we can all transform how we view ourselves and the world around us. What I'm about to tell you all may sound strange, but as a hypnotist, I feel it is my obligation to make you aware of this startling truth. You are hypnotized right now. And over the next few minutes, I will break down exactly how you got into the state of hypnosis, how to get out of this state of hypnosis, and even how to hypnotize yourself to live the life of your dreams. Now, when you think of hypnosis, what is the first image that tends to pop into your mind? Is it the evil villain trying to take over the world with mind control? <laughs> Is it the old man with the pocket watch saying, follow my watch, follow my watch, follow the watch? Or is it the dumb cartoon character with spirals in his eyes who's become a mind control zombie? Because <laughs> none of that is actually what hypnosis really is. You see, hypnosis is not about somebody else controlling your mind. But hypnosis is about understanding that your mind has a tendency to control you. In fact, it's very similar to an experience that you all have had and have every single night when you fall asleep and you dream. You see, when you dream, your mind plays a situation, a story, a scenario that is not true, but it feels true while you are in it. If you're having a crazy, intense dream, your mind isn't analyzing it and going, wait a minute, this, this shouldn't be happening, this isn't real. If, if you were dreaming that you're riding dinosaurs in Jurassic Park, your mind's not going, now wait a minute, I should not be riding a T-Rex right now because this would only happen millions of years ago and I don't know how to ride a dinosaur and this is ridiculous. No, of course, your mind is not doing that. Your mind is going, whoa, dinosaurs, Jurassic Park! Wah, 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 wah. You get the idea, right? You're in it, and it feels real. In fact, if you have a really scary dream, like a nightmare, you get so scared that you wake up feeling super anxious, or you wake up in a cold sweat, or you wake up and maybe you soiled the bed because it was so scary. <laughs> but why? Nothing happened. But it felt so real up here that it became real in here. You experienced what you believed to be true. Hypnosis at its core is simply about understanding that at our nature, we are wired to experience what we believe. Now, another way you might be familiar with this is, is through the placebo effect which is where somebody can take a fake medicine, so something like a, a sugar pill or a saline solution or something that in and of itself should not actually help you get better or improve your sickness. But it does, because we believe when we take something, it will help us get better, even if the something that we take is actually nothing, we have a different experience, because we believe that taking something will improve our, our symptoms, and it does. Hypnosis is about understanding that we experience what we believe. Now, I believe that experience is the best teacher when it comes to something like this. So I would love to give you all a quick 60-second demonstration to show you what it's like to get in this state where you experience what you believe. Now, Hypnosis, again, is not mind control, so nothing will happen that you don't want to happen. But I believe that through this experience, if you open yourself up to being willing to try this out, you'll really be able to gain a deeper understanding into how your mind controls you and how you may already be hypnotized and how you can break out of that hypnosis and how to hypnotize yourself for the better. So if you want to try this, you can do this here live in the audience, you can do this watching virtually from home, and you can do this if you're watching the video as well. All you need to do this is your two free hands and your imagination. 
So if you want to try this out, I'll have you put both of your hands directly out in front of you. Turn your left hand so that your palm is face up and your right hand so that your thumb is face up towards the sky, like a weird version of the Macarena, if you will, all right? And in just a moment, I'm going to have you close your eyes and give you two simple ideas to focus on. And your one job is simply just to use your imagination to make them as real as possible. Focus as much as you can, use your imagination, make those ideas real in your mind. So go ahead and close your eyes now. And I want you to imagine on that right thumb, in fact, wiggle that right thumb, feel that right thumb. Imagine I have suddenly tied a big bright red helium balloon to that right thumb. Feel that balloon lighter than air floating in the sky. And in fact, that balloon tugging and pulling on that right hand and arm makes it want to go towards the sky, towards the ceiling. It makes that right arm and hand feel lighter and lighter. In fact, now imagine I've suddenly tied 12, a dozen big red bright helium balloons to that right arm, that right hand. It makes it want to float, want to rise higher and higher. And you can allow it to continue to float and rise higher and higher into the sky. And as that right hand continues to get lighter and lighter, you can imagine that I've suddenly placed a really big heavy bowling ball on that other hand, that left hand pushing, pressing, weighing down. As that right hand gets lighter and lighter, those balloons carry it higher towards the ceiling. That bowling ball pushes on that left hand further and lower. That right hand getting lighter and lighter, that left hand getting heavier and heavier. Now go ahead and leave your hands exactly where they are, but just open your eyes and notice. What happened? You can go ahead and relax your hands into your lap now. You all did great. Now looking around in the audience there, I could notice that a few of you were like, whoa, what's going on? My hands are all the way out here. Now there was nothing in your hands. There were no balloons. There were no bowling balls. All it was was an idea. And yet that idea became so real that it became what you experienced. Now if you were trying that and you're like, all right, Zach, my hands didn't move. This hypnosis stuff is uh, just not real. All that means is maybe you just lost a little bit of focus. Maybe you were thinking about one of the great talks from earlier today, or maybe what you'll do after the event, or, or your mind was distracted. But you can always try this again at a later time, and, and you'll, you'll find that if you really allow yourself to focus and immerse yourself in that experience, you too will experience it, not just mentally, but physically as well. Because hypnosis is about understanding that we experience what we believe. And it all starts from a suggestion. In that instance, as the hypnotist, I gave you the suggestion to focus on having something in your hands. Focus on one hand carrying something really light, focus on one hand carrying something really heavy, and you notice that experience. But suggestions don't just come from hypnotists. Suggestions come from everywhere. Suggestions come from those close to us, from our friends, from our family. Suggestions come from the information we consume, from media, from social media, in movies, and in music. But the most common place that suggestions come from is right up here. It's our own mind. It's our thoughts. You see, your thoughts are all hypnotic suggestions hypnotizing you every single day. And what sort of suggestions does your mind tend to give you? What sort of thoughts tend to go through your mind? Are they, are they positive thoughts that make you feel confident, that make you feel motivated, that make you feel inspired? Or perhaps if your mind is anything like mine, a lot of times that's not the case. Perhaps your mind it's giving you suggestions like, you're not good enough. You don't matter. You're never going to succeed. And the world would be better off if you weren't in it. And none of those suggestions are true. None of those suggestions are true. They are simply suggestions. Suggestions that on their own are completely powerless. But we give them power when we believe them. You see, if I were to give you another suggestion, if I were to say, hey, you, yeah, you, you're a big purple elephant. 
Yeah, you are. You know it. You are such a big purple elephant, big purple elephant. What do you do with that suggestion? You're like, of course I'm not an elephant, Zach. I know that I'm a human being and I'm not an elephant and I'm not even purple. I might be wearing purple, but I'm not purple and not an elephant. That's just not true. You don't believe it. But if I give you another suggestion and say, hey, you don't matter and nobody cares about you and you know it. It's just as equally untrue. It's just as equally false. Both of those suggestions are lies. And yet why are we tempted to believe one and not the other? We are wired to experience what we believe. But the reality of having thoughts is that we don't control our thoughts. You know, maybe one day we'll understand more about the, the science of the human brain and consciousness and why we think and where our thoughts come from. But until then, know this. Your thoughts are not yours. You are not the source of your thoughts. You don't control what to think or when to think or how much to think. Your thoughts are not your fault. but they are your responsibility to decide what to do with them when they show up. You see, to use an analogy, your thoughts are like the waves in the ocean. You can't stop the waves from coming, but you can choose which waves you want to surf. You can't choose which thoughts to think. You can't stop the thoughts from showing up, but you can choose which thoughts you dwell on. You can choose which thoughts you focus on, and you can choose which thoughts you believe. Because you will experience what you believe. Your thoughts will either hypnotize you or you will be the one to hypnotize your thoughts. You can be the one to take back that power and say, I choose. It's up to me. I don't always choose which thoughts show up in my mind, but I can choose which ones to believe. I can choose which ones decide to be true. Because whatever you believe will be what you experience. And what you experience is what you do, and what you do is who you become. Because the only person you are destined to become is the person you decide to be. You are who you believe you are. For better or for worse, you believe good thoughts, you feel good. You believe the bad thoughts, you feel bad. But those thoughts have no power on their own. The power comes when you believe them. The power comes when you allow the suggestion to become more than a suggestion, but to become a belief and to internalize it and to take it in as true. Even if it's not true, if your mind thinks it's true, it will experience it like it is. So, now you know that your thoughts are hypnotizing you and, and, and you can sort of break out of that hypnosis by focusing on choosing which ones to control and which ones to believe, but how do you, how do you hypnotize yourself? How do, you, how do you make your life better through your thoughts if you can't always control which ones show up? You can't always control what you think or what goes on through your mind. But just like I did as a hypnotist where I gave you a suggestion to experience earlier, you can give suggestions to yourself as well. And one way that a lot of people do this is through affirmations, is through speaking into existence, using the physical words and saying out loud the person that they want to become and the type of life that they want to live. The problem is most people do affirmations wrong. You see, affirmations have nothing to do with what you say. Even though saying words out loud is crucial and important, it has nothing to do with what you say. It's all about what you believe. Because you can say whatever you want, and it means nothing if you don't believe it. 
you can say whatever you want. And it means nothing if you do not believe it. If I wanted to motivate myself and create an affirmation that I can do this talk, I can do that presentation, I'm going to say, like, I can do it. And I go up here and I go, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Might as well say nothing at all because I don't believe it. But if I want to really own it and internalize it, I just take a moment and I go, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. And I believe it. That is the difference maker. You see, even if you don't feel like it's true at first, even if you're not quite sure, even if you have your doubts, even if you have to fake it until you make it, until you become it, do what it takes to make yourself believe it because you will experience what you believe. You can say whatever you want, but it means nothing if you don't believe it. To show you all what I mean by this, on the count of three, I want you all to shout out, I'm having a great day, but I want you to believe you're having a terrible day. It's the worst day of your life. You heard the worst news. The words are, I'm having a great day, but you believe it's the worst day ever. One, two, three. I'm a great day. Eh, sure you are. I don't believe you're having a great day, and clearly you didn't either. But this time, let's flip the script. This time, the words, I want you to shout out on the count of three, I'm having a terrible day, but you believe you're having the best day of your life. It's amazing. You heard the best news ever. The words are, I'm having a terrible day, but you believe it's an incredible day. One, two, three. <laughs> If I didn't know any better, I would believe that you all are having a terribly amazing day. Because it doesn't matter what you said. The words meant nothing. It was all about what you believed. And if you want to be able to live the life of your dreams, if you want to stop your thoughts from hypnotizing you and be the one to hypnotize your thoughts, it's all about what you believe. It's all about what you believe. It's all about which beliefs you fight for. It's all about which beliefs you argue for. It's all about which of those beliefs you say, that is who I am. Because whether you believe you can or whether you believe you can't, either way, you're right. And if you argue for your limitations, you get to keep those limitations. But if you argue for your possibilities, you get to create those possibilities. Which belief will you argue for? Which belief will you fight for? Which suggestion will you choose to accept and believe and ultimately become? The choice is yours. You experience what you believe. Hypnosis is all about experiencing what you believe. And because your minds are wired to experience what you believe, the one question that I leave you with is what will you believe? Thank you.